This is a really short video just to give you a simple tip that's been inspired by one of my patients uh, who's understanding the process of helping herself recover from persistent pain. See if it's something that you can integrate into your day. Hi, my name's Drew Coverdale, I'm a physiotherapist in the UK. I help people with persistent pain, change their perception of it and change their experience of it. If you're interested in this and other videos similar, just click on the subscribe button and you can see more content that might help you help or people around you reverse their persistent pain. So I had a patient who's a, a worked as a nurse and she had the classic uh, traits of always wanting to do for others. She was in a profession that always wanted to do for others. She enjoyed that. She ran a team. Um, but beyond that, beyond her work of asking people how they are all day and doing things for them and getting the thrill and enjoyment of that, she um, got outside of the work environment and did the same thing. You know, how are you and how are you and how are you and how are you? And it's very, they're very noble characteristics and noble personality traits, uh, doing for others, it feels, feels nice, it feels, uh, some people say it's altruistic, you get a sense of worth from doing it, and, and you absolutely do, but it can be a bit destructive if you don't create that time for yourself. So she could see her patterns, and she had, uh, she complained of back pain and had for a long, long time, and she realised that uh, that uh, aspect of it, that I always wanted to do for other people, um, was part of the contribution of her pain because she was physically overloading and also holding on to some of the stress and worries anxieties of other people that really she couldn't control their situations despite her efforts to try so this this cycle if you like of never switching off from wanting to help others um, starts to affect her physically and any time that she excessively did that uh, the pains would be worse so she understood the concept. So she came, she's discharged now, but she came about three or four sessions into some of the work we were doing. And she came with a big smile and she said, I, I feel great. I said, well, what is it that you've done? She said, um, I had a no day. I had a no day. I said, what's that? She said, well, I just said no to everyone. <laughs> so, so. I mean, this is in this an assertive way. It's not aggressive. You don't have to flip to anger. It's simply a assert, assertion of how you feel. And um, she said, "I had no day." I said, "No at work." I said, "No at home." I said, "No to myself." And um, that doing doing uh, no in different contexts uh, may be easier in some places than others. But, um, and often the hardest part is saying no to yourself because we feel a compulsion to do what we've always done. So practicing saying no, and maybe only on one day occasionally, might be a, a something that you find helpful. So having a no day, and it doesn't mean you've got to say no to everyone and all, all of that day like the lady did, but she said no to um, three people who would, contact her on a day off sometimes not on a day off and tell her about how bad their relationships were it'd be the mother-in-law uh, a friend and I think a sister and it there was a pattern in place where when they knew she had time off uh, they'd contact her for the phone or uh, whatsapp or whatever and she while we were in clinic she'd say oh yeah that's it would buzz and she said I know who that is because she would come on a day off um, so you have to put the boundaries for that. So she might have switched the phone off or not engaged in replying or sometimes you can kind of see the message and not read it so that the other person doesn't know you've read it. Uh, at work it might be uh, uh, avoiding a situation where you feel compelled to say yes or it might just having the, finding the strength within you to say no, no I'm, I'm, I'm not, not able to do that. I don't have time to do it. I will do it, but not yet. So you create the circumstances where you're doing it in your own terms. So have a no day. It's uh, See, it's a bit of fun. See if you can start with yourself and then see if you can apply it in situations where you might find it a little uh, more difficult to say no. So go and have a no day and have a nice day.